This is Poseidon, coffee and ham radio's take on a popular vertical non-resonant antenna. Today we're going to talk about Poseidon, show you how to build your own, and put the Greek god of the sea on the air. Coffee and Ham Radio's Poseidon is based on an antenna called the Ribikov. That antenna, created by Italian ham IV3 SBE about 20 years ago, is a non-resonant ground-mounted vertical antenna with a radiating element of about 25 feet. At the feed point is a 4 to 1 unin or transformer to match the 200 ohm impedance the antenna presents. Radials of about a similar length provide a ground network for this antenna. With a tuner, the antenna will operate on the 80s through 6 meter bands, although it gets pretty inefficient on 40 meters and below. Your best performance will be on the higher bands as this style of antenna really excels on 10, 12, and 15 meters. As you get higher in frequency, what happens is the RF radiation angle gets lower and lower, making it excellent DX antenna. And then I've seen some reports of up to 7 dB of gain on the 10 meter band with the Ribikov style antennas. But why the name Ribikov? Well, when IV3 SBE designed this antenna, he envisioned it being supported by an 8 meter fishing pole. Uh, the antenna's 25 foot length makes it perfect to deploy with a lightweight mast or fishing pole. Ribikov, it's Russian for fishermen, so it makes sense to give the fishing pole antenna that name. Now, Coffee and Ham Radios did send me a Poseidon vertical antenna kit to build and to put on the air in exchange for a video, but my opinions are my own and there was no outside influence. So, let's head back inside. We're going to build this antenna and then put it on the air. This is the Coffee and Ham Radios Poseidon. It's a uh, vertical, uh, N-fed, non-resonant or random wire antenna. Uh, based on the uh, Ribikov antenna, it's, uh, the Ribikov is approximately a 25-foot uh, non-resonant radiator fed by a 4 to 1 transformer. So, as with all of the coffee and ham radio antennas, this is a kit. So, what do you get in the kit? First off is the uh, wire winder. This is a 3D printed uh, winder, a very large and substantial. Uh, you get wire. You get a 100-foot roll of 22-gauge silicon wire. This is the same wire they've used for their other antennas. A uh, very high-quality wire. This is an iron powder uh, core, different than the ferrite 43 mix cores that you might find in other uh, 4 to 1 transformers. The reason why the, this antenna goes with an iron powder core is that um, they found that your um, uh, impedance is a little bit lower um, on the 4 to 1 with the iron powder, so it gives uh, rigs that have a built-in, or transceivers with a built-in auto tuner, um, a better job of being able to get get a match uh, with this um, uh, style of this style of core. A little plastic disc. Uh, this will this will put onto your mast if you're using like a soda beams mast or similar. Uh, this will help uh, support the antenna uh, if you deploy it in that style. Heat shrink tubing, uh, that's, you'll use that in the, in the process. A couple of ring terminals, uh, machine screw, bolt, uh, BNC connector. The antenna comes with a BNC. Uh, this will be installed onto your wire winder. Uh, two pieces of magnet wire. This is 18 gauge uh, magnet wire. And um, six uh, zip ties that will be used in various stages of the construction. A uh, piece of uh, Velcro uh, wrap in order to secure everything when you're done. And a uh, heat shrink um, for uh, covering up and protecting your handiwork when the project is complete.
So what makes the Poseidon difference? Well, the key difference lies in the transformer. If you look at uh, many of the four to one Unin designs, they use a red T200 style toroid. Uh, the red toroids work well and offer very good overall efficiency, but a key design element of this antenna was to make it usable and, and tunable on a transceiver with a transceiver's internal tuner. That means you need an SWR of three to one or less over its entire frequency range for an internal tuner to match this antenna. What the coffee and ham radios did is they chose uh, this, this green, um, iron powder core instead of a, of, of a standard ferrite core or the T200 cores. Uh, what, it's, what it's doing is it's giving a better overall impedance matching on a wider range of frequencies with a slight trade-off of efficiency. Is this trade-off worth it? Well, you know, it is if you don't want to bring extra piece of equipment out into the field. Also consider that lower impedance coming out of the antenna means that less loss is in your feed line. So overall, it's a really valid choice to make. Now the second consideration with this antenna is that four to one transformers can pass along common mode currents causing the outer shield of your feed line to radiate. This will affect your antenna's radiation pattern. Proper four to one windings also include a second toroid uh, that is wound as a one to one choke and placed in line. In order to make this antenna a little bit easier to build, uh, the Poseidon does not use the double toroid winding. Instead, you're gonna need a choke of some sort on your coaxial cable. Today, we're gonna use an integrated choke on my feed line with this antenna. And finally, this antenna is designed to be hung off of a portable mast, but any support will do like that tree over there. So let's uh, get a line into it and put this antenna on the air. There we go, that's the one. Now ideally with this antenna, we're gonna want two things. We wanna keep it low to the ground, about six inches or so. We're about a little more than a foot. And um, the second thing is we're gonna to wanna to use a choke of some sort, either a one-to-one -one choke ballon, a coax ballon, an ugly ballon. We're using an integrated choke on our feed here. Um, this antenna comes with a B and C connector. I've put a BNC to UHF connector on mine because that's the way I roll. And um, let's put it on the meter, see what it looks like. It's averaging about three to one on most of the bands except for uh, the 10 meter band where it drops down below uh, two to one. That's interesting. Um, I think maybe it's ground conductivity. So, um, We'll see, uh, still gotta play around with this antenna, but uh, definitely we can work with this uh, with a tuner and um, we'll see, uh, get it on the air. Okay, we're getting set up here. We're at the Mead State Wildlife Area in central Wisconsin. Uh, the Mead is a 23,000 acre uh, bird estuary. And um, uh, lots of, you'll find lots of species here, especially migratory birds. Early spring here, um, I already spotted uh, at least a handful of uh, cranes so that are uh, in the road and in the fields here around the area that I'm set up. So if you're into bird watching, the Mead is the place to be. I got, I got no idea how the um, band conditions are going to be today. Uh, we got a little bit of a solar storm, so we're gonna we're gonna try it. Uh, see how the uh, coffee and ham radios Poseidon does uh, with uh, suboptimal band conditions. Um, maybe we'll start out on 15 meters. Kilo Juliet five. 
five, Delta Whiskey Whiskey. Kilo Juliet five, Delta Whiskey Whiskey. You're a nice five seven into Kilo, or it's US four three one zero. Back to you. Uh, QSL, you are five five into North Texas, and thanks for all the great videos. Just watched the one you posted yesterday. Lots of fun. You give up the good work in seventy three. All right, hey, we'll do. It was a fun, yeah, that was a fun contest. So glad you enjoyed it. Uh, you too. You have a great day in seven three. Delta India five Echo Mike. Kilo Echo five Yankee Yankee Charlie. Fox Trot 4, India Lima Hotel, thank you. 53 and uh, US 4310, back to you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, America. Thank you for US 4310 in Wisconsin. I copy you side by side. All right, thanks a lot for the France. A lot of flutter on your signal. Band conditions aren't the best, but uh, thank you for the contact today. Thank you very much. 7 3. Have a good one. KB9 VBR parks on the air. Kira's at Whiskey Tango 4 Whiskey. Whiskey Tango 4 Whiskey 5 9 into US 4310. Back to you. Uh, 5 9 into Northeastern Alabama. Thanks for the call and uh, have a good day. You too. Thanks for Alabama. You have a great day. 7-3. KB9 VBR parks on the air. Kilo Echo 0, Alpha Romeo Echo. November 1, Sierra Whiskey Tango. Uh, Kilo Echo 0, Alpha Romeo Echo 57 into US 4310. Back to you. Uh, QSL on the 57, you're 59 in November Delta. KB9 VBR parks on the air. Kilo Echo 1, Sierra Kilo the Victor Echo 1 Sierra Kilowatt. All right, you got it there, Mike. I've got you a 5555 here to Nova Scotia this afternoon. Over. All right, well, thanks for Nova Scotia. Yeah, you're a solid 57 in the US 4310 here in Wisconsin. Back to you. Uh, QSL, yeah, conditions here are just god awful. So I'm, I'm glad I'm getting out. 73, my friend. Roger that. It's a hot mess on the air, <laughs> but I'm uh, glad to get you on the log. You have a great day in 73. This is KB9 VBR Parks on the Air. Kira Z. Whiskey Delta 5, Echo November Hotel. Whiskey Delta 5, Echo November Hotel. Nice 57 in the US 4310. Back to you. Oh, Roger, Roger. Thank you, Michael. Uh, yeah, you're about a 55 five here in the Texas Hill Country with some thunderstorms around. Have a good day, 73s, and thank you for activating. Sugar Mike 3, November Radio Yankee. Sugar Mike 3, uh, November Radio uh, Yankee, I got you. You're a 5-3 in the U.S. 4310. Back to you. Roger, Sugar Mike 3, November Radio Yankee. Thank you. You're 53, 5-3 Sweden. Roger. Roger, Roger, Sweden. Uh, thanks a lot for the uh, contact today, and uh, you have a great day, 7-3. Thank you. See you. It's my pleasure. KB9 VBR parks on the air. QRZ. So this is the uh, Coffee and Ham Radio's Poseidon a vertical uh, and a random wire or non-resonant antenna. It's their take on the, uh, on the Ribikov, uh, not a random wire antenna. So <laughs> uh, really good performance today. I was admittedly very surprised on how this antenna performed considering the band conditions we were sort of expecting. Um, it was, band conditions were kind of mediocre. Uh, minor solar storm today, so I had that to deal with. A lot of fading, um, a lot of noise on the bands, flutter, stations in and out the whole nine yards, but still, I was able to give this antenna quite the workout. Um, 15 contacts on 15 meters, uh, went up to 10 meters, Got um, five contacts there. Um, DX, <laughs> uh, France, um, Spain, Portugal, uh, Sweden. So I don't know what it is about Coffee and Ham Radio antennas, but they're 
consistently my DX antennas. And this is another one of them DX performers, especially on them upper bands. So, um, and then we moved down to 20 meters and um, made about 150 contacts on the 20 meter band. Uh, I, I thought 20 meters was gonna be a mess, but um, it had a, had a good consistent pile up uh, for the entire activation. So it was good there. Finished off about 10 minutes on the 40 meter band. I just wanted to see what this antenna would do on, on, on 40 meters. And I uh, picked up a good dozen there on that band. Good signal reports, regional communications, basically what it was. Not, um, not a lot of uh, DX there on that band. Um, especially considering, you know, like I said, solar storm. So um, it performs. I'm happy. And um, I think what we're going to do is... Um, we're gonna definitely play with this antenna some more, uh, get it on a few more activations so I can really get a good feeling of it, uh, see how it performs. But I think that this is gonna be, you know, if you're looking for an, something that's um, sort of easy to deploy, if you, got a, if you got a push up mass, one of those fiberglass masts or something like that, I think this would be an excellent antenna for that, especially if you really wanna take advantage of the upper bands, uh, 15 meters, uh, 10 meters, 12 meters, because, like I said, uh, with this style of antenna, it's um, that takeoff angle just kind of gets lower and lower. So um, you're gonna you're gonna really um, be get some when those bands are open, get some really good performance with this antenna. Uh, 20 meters, I'm really surprised. Uh, did a little bit of reading, and uh, 25 foot radiator is actually really close to three eighths of a wave on the 20 meter band, and that would explain. Uh, it's really good 20 meter performance here. So, um, uh, good deal with that. <laughs> uh, happy with it. It's a fun kit to put together, not that difficult. I'd say it's about on par with uh, putting together an NFED uh, half wave antenna. Um, and, uh, winding the toroid was about that level of complexity. So, um, about an hour, you know, a good evening project to to put the antenna together so um no complaints with that excellent instructions so step by takes you step by step through the whole way just follow those instructions and even you know if you've never built an antenna before you can build this one so um that's my review of the coffee and hand radio is a poseidon n fed or a vertical uh, non-resonant antenna uh, look for this in more uh, POTA activations because I'm really, I'm getting excited to put this one on the air. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. You have a great day in 7-3.